This video presentation is the part 2 lecture on render pest, in continuation with part 1. In this, we will discuss on the transmission, pathogenesis, diagnosis, prevention and control measures of render pest in detail. Before that, we will have a very brief overview about this infection. This disease is caused by the genus Morbilli virus, and the species Rinderpest Morbilli virus. This viral disease is a highly contagious, acute viral disease, characterized by fever, oral erosions, diarrhea, lymphoid necrosis, and high mortality, in domesticated and wild even toad ungulates. Transmission. The ocular and nasal secretions, saliva, milk and the fecal, urine excretions from the infected animal, act as the principal source of this virus. This virus is having the portal of entry, through inhalation. The incubation is on an average of 3 to 15 days from the entry of virus. Pathogenesis. Following entry of virus through inhalation, the virus does its initial replication in the epithelium of the upper and lower respiratory tract and at the regional lymph nodes. Followed by viremia. And their next replication is at the lymphoid organs such as, spleen, lymph node, bone marrow, and lung, intestine. Following secondary replication, the virus get distributed through the secondary viremia, with subsequent viral shedding through nasal, ocular discharges and fecal excretions. This virus survives in discharges and feces for 48 hours. Three forms of rinderpest are observed. Per-acute, acute, and subacute. Per-acute form. Death within two to three days is noticed. This form occurs in young and newborn animals. Subacute form. This is a mild form, not as severe as acute form. Generally low or no mortality observed here. This form is also called as endemic form. Classical acute or epizootic form. In this high mortality is noticed. This form encounters four different phases. Prodromal phase. Erosive mucosal phase. Diarrheic phase. And in surviving animal, convalescent phase. Classical acute form. In this form, first the animal will have prodromal fever. In this phase, pyrexia, depression, nasal and ocular discharge are noticed. After three days, the animal enters into erosive mucosal phase. In this phase, increased body temperature at its peak, and oral stomatitis, that is necrotic mouth lesions are observed. After three days, once the fever subsides, the animal will have diarrheic phase. In this phase, the animal exhibits shooting diarrhea or dysentery, and abdominal pain. After three days, the animal will end up with death, due to excessive dehydration. The death is due to dehydration. If the animal survives, then it enters to the recovery or convalescent phase. Death rates in this infection is extremely high, may reaches to 100%. The schematic diagram illustrating the external clinical manifestations generally exhibited in rinderpest infection. Like shooting diarrhea, dysentery, fever, dehydration, nasal, ocular and oral discharges. Stomatitis and foul breath. This virus specifically damages the alimentary, respiratory and lymphoid system that will leads to enteritis, pneumonia and immunosuppression respectively. The death is due to severe dehydration. The picture showing the necrotic oral lesion, that is oral stomatitis, in the erosive phase. The picture depicting the zebra striping in the large intestine, due to multiple longitudinal linear hemorrhages. Diagnosis can be done in field level or in the laboratories. Field diagnosis. Based on the history. By signs and clinical symptoms observed in erosive and diarrheic phase and by post-mortem findings, like zebra striping in large intestine, and necrosis of the lymphoid organs. Next. Laboratory diagnosis. For lab diagnosis. Ocular and nasal secretions, necrotic tissue from the oral cavity, blood collected during fever, and serum are collected from live animal. In dead animal. Spleen, and lymph node are collected. This virus can be cultivated or isolated in lab by two ways. Number 1. Animal inoculation. Rabbits can be used. The second method of cultivation of this virus is cell culture system. Here, calf kidney cells, vero slam cells, B95 aslam cells, that is lymphoblastoid cells can be used. Next, once the rinder pest virus is infected over the cells, the virus enters the host by fusing the viral envelope with the cell membrane. During fusion, the viral proteins like hemagglutinin and fusion proteins may get integrated to the cell membrane. So, this integrated fusion protein over the infected cell, will make the infected cell to fuse with the nearby neighboring cells around, which is required for cell-to-cell -cell spreading of virus. So after fusion with the neighboring cells, this appears like an irregular shaped, 
multinucleated giant cell. This type of cytopathogenic characteristic is termed as syncytium. These are some of the laboratory tests was done for the diagnosis of this virus. For antigen detection, agar gel precipitation test, counterimmunoelectrophoresis, YALISA, and reverse transcriptase PCR was done. For antibody detection, competitive YALISA, and virus neutralization test was done. Control and eradication. Overall measures followed for the control and eradication of this infection in different countries. Like, humane slaughter of infected or exposed animals and disposal of carcass by burning or burying. Quarantine and restricted susceptible animal movement. Mass vaccination using live attenuated tissue culture vaccine. Ring vaccination in outbreak situation. Sero surveillance, that is serological monitoring of livestock. For vaccination. Live attenuated. Tissue culture render pest vaccine was used. This was available in a freeze dried form. This vaccine was developed by Dr. Walter Plough Wright and his colleague Ferris by attenuating the virus in calf kidney cells. Plough Wright and Ferris passaged, that is, cultivated this cobate, O, render pest virus strain, which was originally isolated from Africa, in calf kidney cells. This virus got attenuated by 90th passages over the calf kidney cells. This was the vaccine and vaccine strain used worldwide, and played a great role in rinder pest eradication. Breakthroughs in rinder pest vaccine development. These are the rinder pest vaccines and methods developed over different timeline, starting with the first, the Robert Koch's method. This is the first form of rinder pest vaccine attempted in 1890s. Here, the blood and the bile from the infected animal are used to protect the other animals. Next, serum virus method. In this hyperimmune anti-serum from the render pest recovered animals are used, over the other animals, to immunize. Later, capernized vaccine, the first breakthrough in the render pest vaccine development history. This goat tissue vaccine was developed by Edward at IVRI, by attenuating the render pest virus, in the goats by 600 serial passages. Next, in 1930s, lapinized vaccine, that is rabbit passage vaccine was developed. Nakamura attenuated the virus by serially passaging in rabbits. Later, in 1940s, avianized vaccine, that is chick embryo passage vaccine was developed. In this, Shope attenuated this virus by serially passaging in chick embryo. In 1950s, lapinized, avianized vaccine was developed. Here the virus was serially passaged in rabbits and chick embryos. Next, plow right vaccine, the second breakthrough in the history. First time the cell culture system was used in render pest vaccine development. As we already discussed, Plough Wright and Ferris attenuated the cobate, O, render pest strain in the calf kidney cells. Single dose of this vaccine was highly immunogenic and provided lifelong immunity to the cattle. No adverse reactions were observed on using this vaccine. This vaccine was used worldwide and played a great role in render pest eradication. Later, in 1990s, the thermostable version of Plough Wright vaccine was developed in the name of Thermovax. Recombinant vaccines was also developed, but only for experimental purpose, in which vaccinia virus genome backbone was ligated with the hemagglutinin and the fusion gene of Rinder pest virus and expressed for control and eradication. In 1992, global Rinder pest eradication program was initiated by FAO to eliminate Rinder pest from the world by the year 2010. They have come up with following strategies for the render pest disease control. In case of this disease outbreak, any one of the following control options was chosen by different countries based on their religious, cultural or ethnic objections, and their financial resources. The first option was stamping out. In this, all the clinically affected, suspected and exposed susceptible animals were slaughtered, and the carcasses were disposed by burning or burying. The second option was modified stamping out, with ring vaccination. In this, only clinically affected animals were slaughtered, and strict animal movement restrictions, and ring vaccination, were carried out in the susceptible populations. Then, the third option was quarantine with ring vaccination. In this, clinically affected animals were quarantined, and strict animal movement restrictions, and ring vaccination, were carried out in the susceptible populations. As we discussed, ring vaccination was followed during outbreak. Here, following outbreak situation, vaccination is done for the animals around 10 km radius, within 5 days. This type of ring vaccination program, indirectly provides protection to the other animals in the population. This is also confers one way of herd immunity to the susceptible population. 
With this we are coming to the end of render pest infection. In next video presentation we will discuss on the PPR infection. Hope the lecture is informative and useful. Thank you.